I got a question for you first. Is this... Um, sure. Okay. Are you including this in the podcast? I am. Okay. Wait, okay. is this a serious question? Oh, it's it's semi-serious. Our, our friendship may or may not hinge on it. I'm kind of scared right now. What is this? Guess what month it is. It's your birthday month. It's my birthday month. Okay. Oh, <laughs> damn. I, I, like, I was, like, getting ready for something scary. You're like, I have a question for you. I'm like, no. Um... Are you telling me that you want to quit the podcast? Yeah, Although, I'm all done. we're done. It's all thank it's, you guys. It's been a lot of it's, fun. It's, it's fun, fun. We like <laughs> one year know, and one month. We made it. We we got it. You know, it's been it's been okay. Yeah, you know, it's no, we're not. The, the podcast is not being completed. No. Okay, so no, yes, it's I your birthday. I, was, I thought it was going to be. It's my last birthday month before I become a mom. Oh, isn't that both sad and like exciting at the same time? It's very like... well. I was looking for your um, birthday present, and uh, I keep on like looking at baby stuff. I'm like, no, it's not about Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> it's not know, about him. I, listen, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go on a tangent. But I don't understand like the phenomenon that happens of like once you like announce that you're pregnant, like all through your pregnancy, like it, it depending on where it lands. Like, all of your birthday gifts and Christmas gifts and any other, like, fun gift moments all, like, have to do with the baby. I feel like, like, I don't, you know, it's not, like, the same thing with, like, um, you know, with guys, I don't feel like. Mm-mm. No, it's not. But, like, literally half my Christmas gifts um, were baby-related. Oh my and gosh. like my secret Santa gifts were all baby related, and I'm like, I, I, I said to my husband, I was like, you know what I want for my birthday? Yeah, I just want to go to a spa and have someone just knead on my back for like an hour and like just get a really good massage mm-hmm. and just relax and enjoy my day. That's all yes. I want for my birthday. Like I don't want like t- like money or stuff. Mm-hmm. Actually, now I want an Apple pencil. That's about mm-hmm. I can buy that. But I'm like, I just I just want to go relax. My back is killing me. Yeah. So. I feel you. So, um, I'm sorry, we're going to get back to talking about Clayton. By the way, if you're new to this podcast, uh, Sam is pregnant. And guess what, Sam? Your baby size, you're 21 weeks, right, currently? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's, um, the, it's as big as a Kool-Aid burst. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, like, you know the Kool-Aid, like those Kool-Aids that came in the plastic container, and then you have, they have the twist-off tops? Yeah. And then you would always, like take the twist off talk top and, and like, like suck, on, suck it. on it and you always get stick to your tongue yeah that's the size of your baby currently oh i've been oh i have it i have 90s nostalgia app for the baby so every week <laughs> i'm gonna tell you how big the baby was just so just you know just so you're aware i don't know what last week's was because i forgot to tell you because last week we had the fic list on yeah. our podcast and if you want to check out that episode it was super fun we talked about fanfics but this month, or this week, we're going to be talking about a really interesting book. Although, I do want to say that there's another thing happening this month, too, Sam. It is Black History Month. Mm-hmm. So, that's super exciting. And I also wanted to ask you, because um, this is our first, like, episode of February. Mm-hmm. Have you, like, read, like, how many books have you read so far? And are you still on track with your good reads goal? Um, so I've read five and a half books so far. So that puts me one book ahead of my Goodreads goal. Okay. Okay. So I've read a total of eight books so far and I've been a bit busy with work and a bit busy with the podcast and a little bit in the reading like slum and yeah. I am three books behind. Okay. Oh no. What's your goal this year? 150. Yeah. Mine's 40. Like, uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'm tr- I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, did you have any favorite books that you read in January? Um, I'll, January was all podcast books, so. Um, oh really? Yeah, uh, January was a, a reading slump month for me. The half book that I'm reading is actually one that I've picked out on my own, which is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I have not started it yet. I'm just so overwhelmed, Sam. I have so many arcs I got to read off Net listen, Galley. Listen, just just you know, it might not be the book for you. Uh, it, since it has to do with creepy dolls, probably not yes. because I don't like yes. cre- I don't like dolls. You know, know what? There's my friend. 
if she's listening to this podcast, you know who you are. She has this creepy ass doll. We call it Creepy Catherine. It's like <laughs> the standing doll and it has big ass feet and it's like green and it's it stands straight and she oh she keeps it out year round. Anyways, I'm glad she didn't do this to me, but she took the doll and gave it to my friend's son and my friend's son put it in her my other friend's bedroom so while my Mm. friend was like taking a shower she came out she saw the doll because i'm telling you if that doll came into my room or came into my house i would kick it i hate dolls listen it wasn't until we were almost like done with high school did you tell me that you were terrified to spend the night at my house because of my porcelain dolls i hate dolls sam (laughs) i hate I was just so i'd had them since i was like eight or nine i was so used to them just staring at me it never even bothered me I hate dolls with a passion, seriously. I hate them. Um, so for me, my favorite books I've read so far this year, or in January, was uh, Bloodmark, which is the second book to Legendborn. By the way, Sam, you need to read Legendborn because it's I know, so... it's on my shelf. I'll get to it. so good. It's I'll like Arthurian... It. Ugh, so good. It's like Arthurian legend. Mm-hmm. And then I also really enjoyed um, a book that we read for the podcast, The 7% of Rogue Denbrex, and also... Um, The Love Batch. Those Mm. two were really good. But the book that we're actually going to be talking about today is The Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. And this is his second book that he published. Before we even get into this book, I do want to mention some trigger warnings. This book does deal with racism, child abuse, violence, murder, revenge porn, sexism, gang violence, and police brutality. And I may be missing some... But just be aware that this book does deal with some heavy topics. Now, Sam, mm-hmm. what did you think about the book? Um, was it like a hard read for you? Did you enjoy it? And yeah, what do you think? I enjoyed it. Like overall, it was it was a good book. Um, there's a lot of subject matter that I don't feel like I can like personally talk about because I'm not very well versed in like, I guess the the. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I don't feel like I can speak to what was going on in the book because I obviously have like, (sighs) dude, this was a hard book and I had a hard time with it and I don't really want to give my opinion because I'm afraid that someone's going to call me racist. Okay. But how, like, because you feel a certain way about the book or because it no, just because deals with... it's like if i start speaking on like racism and racist culture and everything as a white person it it's not like a, a topic that people like to hear mm. white people talk about because obviously i came up i come from a like a different like side that like i've never had to deal with any of this before mm-hmm. um there's a point in the book where like they're at the police station and the police are just barreling into them and it's each separate one um and it's like unfortunately that's the reality of it and it it really kind of sucks but like i can't like i have no opinion to give or like if any i give any opinion it's going to be seen as like from a a uh, corner of privilege like i don't have any authority to talk about this i think that i understand where you're coming from And I understand that it's like, like you said, you do have the privilege of not going through this and not dealing with racism and not being judged for the color of your skin. But I also think that it's important as someone who is a person who is someone who's white, um, who is able to like in some ways speak about, not speak like as the matters as like their own personal beliefs but be able to talk about these things because the more we're able to talk about racism even if it's a difficult thing to talk about the more that this can open like your mind and more that you can be aware of some situations that happen and see that the injustice around no and I, i understand the injustice i mean i went through an entire four years of criminal justice and uh, of like, cause I have my bachelor's degree in it, and like we talk about how like minorities are over um, incarcerated, and mm-hmm. that they already have this stigmatism attached to them. That even if they really like, if they didn't do it, the they're guilty until until proven innocent, and it happens over and over and over yeah. again. 
And all I can say is, like, this shouldn't happen, and, like, this is not okay, and I can recognize that it's not okay. But unfortunately, it's police culture, and until police culture changes, which I'm just one person, I can speak about it all I want, but until police culture changes and the justice system changes, like, they're they're always going to be marginalized and over-incarcerated and um, just, like, like, these... I'll get into it in the spoiler section. Yeah, Either yeah. way, it's a really hard subject to talk about because I know it's wrong that how these boys were treated in the book. I know how it was wrong. But at the same time, it's like, how are we supposed to change the minds of these people who, like, they are they already have this, like, major bias attached to them because it's hard to get rid of your biases. And, like, we're taught in in uh, CRJ and then we're taught in nursing to be very well aware of our biases and how they're going to affect our way of thinking and how they're going to affect our actions and mm-hmm. trying our best not to allow them to affect how we treat people mm-hmm. and that's so hard mm-hmm. you know what? I think that's good that as a nurse you're told about your biases and you're told to be aware of it too because I feel like some people don't even like really are aware that they have biases Mm -hmm. that they feel a certain way so i think that it's important that as a nurse you're able to see that because i think that it's scary and i mean honestly i've seen so many i mean this is not a critical like uh, like a good source but i've seen a Mm -hmm. lot of videos on tiktok in which women especially women of color who are in the hospital they do not get treated the same as women Mm -hmm. who are white like i think i saw this woman who um she was giving birth and she felt something is wrong and the doctors ignored her mm-hmm. and thought she was just overreacting and that is scary the fact that a doctor can be like you're overreacting and but yet they'll listen to someone else just because mm-hmm. their skin color is different and that's sad and it's heartbreaking and it's hard to see and honestly i hope that in 10 years 50 years that it's not going to be the case like that like right. that this won't be the case but as for the story, did you enjoy the story itself? No, I, yeah, I, like I said earlier, like I did enjoy the story. It was a very good story. Um, I honestly picked the wrong person who I thought murdered. Actually, I picked two wrong people. I didn't even oh. see the person that they picked. I had I had two people in mind, and then I was wrong completely. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was wrong too, Sam. <laughs> Don't worry, I was completely wrong. Um, I do want to say that I actually listened listen to this book as a audiobook, yeah, which I don't know. Did you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I absolutely love the audiobook. Uh, they have different sound effects, voice actors, so it makes the whole book feel very realistic. You mm-hmm. even get to hear like news reports of the case throughout the story, and the story is also broken up into many different points of view which if you're not a fan of that then you may not like it because i i don't like many different points of view and i understand the writer did it to tell the three boys stories but i felt like in a way it was too short like it took away from their story and you just got to see everyone else's view on how they view these young men and how like they think that like one or the other person murdered the principal Mm -hmm. and i just i don't know i kind of wish that it just focused more so on them like maybe becoming friends or working together more and then them figuring out what really happened although i did find a interview on npr from the writer nick brooks who said the reason why he used so many different points of view in the story is because it would be cinematic but also it would there would be a mystery component to it he also stated that before you even meet these young men you are meeting all these people who have things to say about them and that really hits hard because even if you view yourself as like a good person someone may look at you and the way that you talk or the way that you look and judge things about you Um, i think there's one character in this book who is super tall and people view him right away as being violent just because of the way he stands, which is completely untrue. I do really want to talk about this book, Sam. So I think I want to get into the like spoilers part. But before we do, I do want to ask you what your rating of this book was. Four stars. Four stars. Mine was four and a half. Mine was four and a half. 
I wanted to give it five stars, but there's a reason why I didn't give it its full five stars. Yeah, I have a reason why I didn't give it full five. It has nothing to do with, well, it does, but it doesn't have anything to do with the story, and I'll tell you why in the spoiler section. Okay. Well, if you guys uh, would like to read this book, then please go do so, and then come back and check out this episode. We're going to be going into our spoilers part, and if you do want to check out other episodes in which we're not talking about books, please go check out last week's episode in which we're collabing with The Thick List, which is a fan fiction podcast and we talk about fanfics and we also do a whole game show which was super super fun so go check that out but yeah spoilers ahead i don't know what you want to talk about do you want to talk the murderers first or okay so um okay so i'll I'll tell you the, the big reason why i didn't give it five stars i feel like the time they spent together trying to discover who the murderer was was the shortest part of the book when i felt like that should have been the more significant part of the book Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, I I feel like like that that should have been the biggest chunk of like the who done it kind of thing, like the like the mystery part of it. Mm-hmm. I felt like should have been more like instead of like being the last third of the book, been like more more of like the middle to all the way through the end. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I I even wrote the same thing that you just said. I said that I felt like I wanted them like that they. They like, literally took two seconds to figure out what really happened mm-hmm. in the end. I think that it would have been more interesting for me if it was just one point of view, like one of the one of the young men, and then he is slowly figuring out where everyone was, and then he's figuring out the crime. But instead, it was like, okay, these are what everyone else thinks about these people. This is what they're accused of, and then like they're just like dragging out of figuring out what's happening, and it's like bang. We figure it out. There's it. Right. And then that's the end. And then we're gonna we're gonna find the audio clip, which was by the way, why didn't that guy who had the audio clip of literally a murder happening go to the police? Up until we found out who nobody was, the whole point of nobody was that they were they were nobody. Like they didn't want they they weren't they were just a person in the background. I know. What what did I, but I agree with you. Like, but what did it matter about their opinion and what did it matter of what they saw and what they did because they're nobody. Yeah, but also on top of that, they could have easily secretly just put that video on YouTube or even given it to the police anonymously. I know, I, it, was, it was like, it's like, we could have skipped all of this if you just did what you were supposed to do. I get the reason why they had to do the video clip, because as, because I think that they wouldn't believe them if mm-hmm. if that guy was like, hey, I saw the murder. But I think that it would have made more sense if they had to work more towards go, getting to that goal. Now the murderer, I did not expect that all. First, I I assumed it was going to be the ex teacher. I like did the too. Te- I was okay, because like, she was I'm like, sus. I'm like it's Mrs. Hall. Okay, and was it? Did I miss something? Was it ever explained whether she was faking her pregnancy or if she lost her pregnancy? Um, no, it wasn't ever explained, and never. And I just assumed, I assumed that she left because she realized that um, he was um, embezzling money. Mm-hmm. from that scholarship um which by the way that's all c- types of messed up mm-hmm. but i um i just don't like it was just a random th- thing thrown in i felt like to throw you off but in the end you really didn't know more about it because like mrs hall seemed like that ten- kind of teacher that was like there to inspire you there to like help you through whatever you need and then she's gone and then you're like oh but she said she's pregnant but she's drinking so was she really pregnant and also is she actually married to a cop like that whole thing never really made sense to me and it's I'm like just... it's like the red herring that was just kind of hanging around so you were like oh it's this person and then it was stanley was innis he was mm-hmm. the other one yeah yeah i Listen, I I honestly don't even know. I was very confused. And when they were like, it's the assistant principal, I was like, what? Who is that? Who is it? (laughs) This, like, person who came out. And I think if it wasn't the two I thought of, I was like, it's just going to be this random person we never even heard of. And sure enough, it was just the assistant principal. It was. And I was so confused because I was like, I don't even remember you. Because you're not – the character wasn't memorable. But here's the thing about it, too. Is like he's like, oh yeah, like I just like I found this gun in in the toilet, and then I just happened to like steal this kid's comb, and whatever. Like, 
was he was this premeditated or was this just like i guess opportunity uh, it seemed like it was opportune no it seems i don't know but it was like mildly premeditated when the opportunity arised so he got the gun from yes. he got the gun from um trey from trey which okay yes. no real in reality he got the gun from trey but trey uh, trey hit it and then jb was like i'm gonna hide this again <laughs> <laughs> um so and then he saw the gun and he was like oh i got a plan and i guess it made sense but then how did he i don't know i felt like it was just equally like he saw it and just like this is my moment to do it yeah um now I found it very funny, not very funny. It's very sad funny, okay? That the fact that in this school, they're it's supposed to be elite. This is supposed to be a very mm-hmm. harsh, strict elite school, which and honestly, it just reminds me of like a military school. Yes. And it's supposed to be all about being a good gentleman and being a good man. And then here's the principal taking money from students. And you're like, oh, like what? Like this is everything that he stands for. About being a good person and completely does not follow his own rules, which mm-hmm. I guess makes sense because some people are like that. But this school was so strict; like um, the students have to follow certain lines in the hallway. It, they got in trouble for the simplest things, and they would get like marks off and um, points off, basically. And they couldn't gain points. And once they hit a certain amount of points, they would have to go to detention. If they got low enough grades, they would get kicked out. And if you came to school without your, like, uniform on, correctly on, you would get in trouble or your hair not brushed. And it seems so stressed. Like, you can tell the main characters, especially um, Trey, um, is so stressed out and mm-hmm. overwhelmed about the pressure that the school put on him and also the pressure that his uncle puts on him because his uncle is also very strict on him and i am a strong believer and listen i don't have children and i don't think i'll ever have children but i'm a strong believer of let children grow and let children have passions like yeah. i you know i have things to say about our high school some negative things to say about our high school that we went to but the one positive thing i will say is the fact that when I was in high school, I really wanted to do culinary arts, and a bunch of other students did too. And so our principal worked out a new program in which we could do culinary arts. Was it a fantastic program? Probably not, but Listen, it was a y'all, way. Y'all were unpaid lunch ladies. Pretty much, pretty mm-hmm. much. But you know, we did. I did win a really good scholarship through yeah. through yeah. it. But um, it was. It was a way for us to follow our passions, to try something new, and to show that the school cared. Yeah. The fact that this school doesn't care. Like, um, Ramon was selling his grandmother's uh, uh, pupusas. By the way, I've had those before. They're so flipping good. Have you ever had a pup- No, I was going to tell you that, like, I heard all about these pupusas the entire way through the book, and I had to so, go Google them and find out what they what? were. You never had one? I'm going to get I've never one. even heard of them before. They're so good. They're like, okay. How do I explain it? It's like dough. It's like... Ugh. Okay, the ones I usually the ones I usually have is like bean and cheese, and it's like a round thing, and it's kind of like dough, but it's like a soft thing, and it's like like a tortilla. Like a, I don't even know how to claim, it, but it's so fucking good. Oh, it's so good. But it's like <laughs> it reminds me a lot of like a flat filled mochi. I don't know, but without the ice cream and without the race gum, I don't know. But they're so good, Sam. And if I if I see you again, I'll bring you one cuz I love them. They're so good um and if, fantastic. If you see me again. If I see you again before no, when I see you again. Yeah. Um, I was like, please don't say if. Let no, 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 no. When I see you again, I'll yeah. bring you one. Um, but, but, yeah, he kept talking about this. And, honestly, the way he was talking about it, I thought it was, like, a dessert. No, no. And then when I went to go Google it, I found out it was, like, this, like, savory thing. And I was like, I really want to try this. Because everyone keeps, like, raving about these pupusas. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. But now I want it because everyone says they're amazing. No, they're so good. We, okay, so I was also very upset, though, when um, the principal saw that he was selling these, uh, selling them, and then he took the money. Yeah. Excuse that me. That was unnecessary. That was so unnecessary. That, I was like, you're stealing money. And I, I think that should have been the first among many red flags about this principal, that he was not a good person. Mm-hmm. But it just was very frustrating. Now, did you have any favorite character, and what character do you think could have been done better? Um, my favorite character, honestly, was JB's girlfriend. Oh, yeah. She was so smart. I loved she her. She was awesome. I loved her. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know about which character could have been... Actually, you know what? I wish that uh, we got a little more time with Trey's uncle. Because he was just kind of a royal douchebag the whole time. And I wish that he had a little bit of redemption, but he was just a royal douchebag the whole time. Yeah, or, he... Or his mm -hmm. mom. Or Trey's mom. Yeah. Oh, I do like Trey's mom. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. Trey's mom was the mom that had a um, a drug addiction. Yeah, and she he, came down from New York after yeah. he was... Um, after, the, like, the news broke that he was mm -hmm. a suspect and whatever. Because it was, like... There really was, like... A, a point for like a redemption arc for both of them and mm -hmm. like they the mom kind of had one but like trey's uncle was just a dick trey and also i didn't like the fact that trey trey's uncle was like you i let you down because you should have came to me about the gun because you actually act because the whole thing is he accidentally took his uncle's bag which had a gun in it and then he went to school and realized like oh shoot i don't want to get in trouble first off he didn't want to get in trouble with his uncle because he knew his uncle would be mad at him and he didn't want to get in trouble in school so he did the only thing he could do and he hid the gun and he was going to come back for it and get rid of it because he accidentally brought a gun to school um but and the like his uncle was like i i let you down because you should have trusted me but you never gave him the opportunity to trust because i think as a child and as a like having a parent you, you trust goes both ways and respect goes both way i am a strong believer that as a parent you should earn respect from your child and you should earn trust from your child and if your child doesn't trust you and doesn't respect you then you have to look at your relationship and think of where you went wrong and think of where you can like grow back that respect and trust i don't think that um trey's uncle in any way was a good father figure but i also feel like his uncle was dealing with his own demons um and dealing with his own stuff and that definitely affected him mm -hmm. um so i absolutely love uh raymond uh absolutely loved him mostly because of the fact that uh i also love baking and cooking so i was like yes and i also loved it i loved his grandmother oh yeah his grandma was amazing yes um, but it was a fantastic story. Um, I definitely hit hard with certain things, um, especially when people judge you for the color of your skin. And, you know, like you said before, Sam, the, the story was a little bit hard to read and it was difficult to get through. But I think that books like these are important to read and important to have out in the world because maybe someone can relate to it or maybe someone can read it and they can realize that huh i never realized that this point of view exists in the yeah. world so i think and it's important to have next week we are going to be reading this time it's real by ann ling um so sam do you know the one trope i absolutely love uh yes, sam, this is, so, sam this is so hold easy. hold on yes i do enemies to lovers no no friends, i love enemies to lovers, lovers. What? No. I love that. Big dating. Love big dating. Yes. Big dating. Listen, listen, listen. Pregnancy brain. Killing me here. I knew what I it was. I, I, okay. I just had to work it out. Yes. So this book has to do with fake dating. I absolutely love fake dating. And I also do love enemies to lovers. Okay. But fake dating is my number one trope. So this book follows uh, Eliza Ling. Lynn, I'm sorry, Eliza Lynn, who wrote an essay about falling in love, and it goes viral so much that it gives her the opportunity to get a career-launching internship at her favorite magazine. But the issue is, is that Eliza lied. She has never been in love before, and she, like, just wrote this essay uh, just for a good grade. But then she has to find a fake boyfriend uh to get this internship to prove that she wasn't lying and that comes kaz song um and he is a celebrity in her class she promises to write his college applications if he pretends to be her boyfriend but the lines between faking it and real become start to fade together and can she still follow her dreams if that means breaking her own heart i'm excited for this book because it's romantic and it's cute and it's not heavy and i love it i know i'm 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 all for some like february fluffy it's gonna be so fluffy it's gonna but be so fluffy i love it anyways if you guys did enjoy this podcast please feel free to rate us on spotify and also follow us on spotify and apple and sam 
our other socials. Oh my. So yes, if you would like to follow us, stalk us, talk to us, uh, we do have a uh, TikTok, which is just one more page podcast. And for all of the wonderful uh, pictures, and I'm actually keeping up on making schedules Woo. and all the fun updates and stories and stuff, uh, we do have an Instagram, and it's just one more page official. Those are the two best places to get a hold of us besides our email. So if you want to talk to us, um, give us your discussions, give us your opinions, tell us what you like about the podcast, what you don't like about the podcast, best way to get a hold of us. Um, so yeah, yeah, go ahead and follow us on those. And we hope you all have a wonderful Sunday, and we will talk to you guys all next time. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.